Mike, turn your games down. Hi, we have another mini episode of Games My Mom Found. Hi, Mike Hubbardin. And who's beaming to me from a satellite for only for a little limited time only with me tonight? From 600 AD, Red Fox. Welcome back. On the stormy, stormy morning, it's Dominic Chikoki back as well. Descent <laughs> Waves podcast host, Overblog Facebook group guy, Life is Strange player, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dragon Ball Z Super Warriors game player, yeah. so, sort of. Yes, and that will be out by this time, so yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are here to talk about a very, very strange game that only just became stateside, what, less than, like, what, a couple months ago it was? Yeah, like three or four months ago. Damn. Uh, we are here to talk about Radico Dreamers, developed by Square, published by Square, and came out originally on this Super Famicom in 1996, and then we didn't get it again until the Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers edition that came out on April 7th, 2022. <laughs> so the first guess. localized um, Satellite game. Yeah. We got the only one so far, huh? Man, uh, yeah. There's a bunch of games on this Zelda view that I want to play. Yes. I There's a Zelda one. There's two Zelda ones, actually. But I haven't played them yet. For those that don't know, the Zelda view, which I'm assuming could be a lot of people, it was a, it was a thing that you was a cartridge you bought in Japan for the Super Famicom you put in your system, and you had a certain hour window where they would beam the game, essentially, to your system, and you could play it during that hour window. And this was one of the games that was available to play. Maybe it was yeah. a two-hour window, but it wasn't a very big window. It, it was like you. Could, I think you would like. I think the cartridge would like hold the data. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, that makes. And like, I, and like, some of them were like broadcast live because there would be like commentary. Then a lot of them, like the Radical Dreamers, you could just like play as long as you had the data, I believe. Okay, and there were a hundred and fourteen games a that lot. came out for this thing. So that's that's interesting. I don't know anything about them really, other than I know there's a Zelda, there's some Zelda stuff on there that I want to play. But there's a Fire Emblem on there. Chrono Trigger Jet Bike Special, whatever the hell that is. I'm assuming the jet bike. I'm assuming it's jet bike race, but like maybe blown out a little bit. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So that's what it's just. A, it was just a weird thing, and it, it, but it's cool to see that this stuff actually became you know translated, and you you know I bought it. Like it exists. I mean, digital on, digital only for me, but it exists. Mm-hmm. Makes me happy. Like, you know, we're getting stuff that never got an official release and they're finding a way just to throw it on something just to get it out there. I mean, that's what you would hope they would do, but I would never expect them to like honor the games or like care about them in that way. Nintendo, they move on. Or Square you. Like Square is doing it a lot more, but like Radical Dreamers of all games, like yes, that's the one I wanted to see come out here, but I never expected it really. Like it's I think it's incredible this exists. <laughs> It is. These are, are things that I, I would assume like would have came out during the PlayStation era, like when Square was bringing out like Final Fantasy V and localizing other things we haven't seen. Like that, I assume would have been the era, but they waited this long to finally do it. They waited a long ass damn time, <laughs> and I feel like the only reason we got this is just because they released Chrono Cross again, which I'm thankful for, and then they were just they just decided to take this on, which I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, they, because, they figured they had to add a little extra, you know, for people that actually knew the original game. So that that was it, and it worked. Because it, it's not really, it's not even a remake, which we'll get into the Chrono Cross game. It's more of a, we're well, not in this episode, but we'll get into it soon. Is more of a just a remaster, I think, right? Because they just kind of yeah, yeah, pretty. Yeah. They added a little new coda, a, just a slight little thing. If you beat both of them, but that's it. That's still cool. I plan to see that. So for those, um, but go ahead. I actually played this game. I played Radical Dreamers. The translate there was a translated ROM back in the day. Me and Red actually played it on some. On, on one, was it on quality ROMs at the time? Most likely, the site that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. <laughs> from yeah, it most most likely was. God, I forgot their name. Something tortilla was it like Tortilla Godzilla or Nacho Godzilla or something like that. Oh there? man, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, and and they they just had a they had like a very they had only certain ROMs and this was one of them and somebody translated it and we we both played it. I remember like this is okay. We we love Chrono Trigger so we we had to play it and I was always like this doesn't make any sense. And I haven't played it since then. I have not touched it in years and it, it felt good to finally go back to this game which is actually just a it's a text adventure you just read text yes. and make choices and i i love it it's, it's <laughs> great it so like talking about the chrono series for a second chrono trigger is cool i like chrono trigger a lot 
Chrono Cross is a huge tonal departure from Chrono Trigger. It is like the T2 to the Terminator that is Chrono Trigger. And this game is kind of like the middle branch that like explains where that tone comes from because it is so much darker than what Chrono Trigger is. I mean, I had a bad opinion of Chrono Cross for a long time, but I haven't played it since the PS1 days. So I don't know. I'm excited to go back to it soon and see if my opinion is better. No, that I'm older. I, I beat it for the first time this year already. And I, I just I'm bowled over by it. It's so good. I, I really just like the the way this series turned out. I wish there were more, obviously, but like, yeah, Chrono Trigger is cool. But just the things that they were doing in this game and Chrono Cross are just so much more interesting to me. And there's actually a lot more to this game than you would think, because it is, as I said, just a text adventure. But there's a lot to it. Like there's random battles that come in here, depending as you're exploring this castle or manor you end up running yes. into random battles <laughs> that will affect the ending and affect how things go. Like if you take too much damage, you can die. It's kind of interesting. It's and I mean, and the music is, is there. The music is great. And it has the same battle music that Chrono Cross has. Yes, that is, that is the cool bridge as well as the Chrono Cross soundtrack, which is legendary considered yes. one of the best of all time. And here is several tracks in the Chrono Trigger sound font, which is incredible as well. Red, is it, do you know, is it the same battle music as Cross? It's the same battle music, yeah. Okay. God, I haven't I haven't played Cross in so long, but I'm like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> That's why there's actually a few tracks that you're listening to in Dreamers that cross over to, to Chrono Cross. Like Kids Theme is the same. Uh a mm-hmm. sixteen bit version, of course, but Because I know we we played this I think one of the after cross has already existed. So I remember, I remember we were thrown off by it because it's Surge and Kid and we're like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Yeah, because when Cross came out, that's when we, like, right around the time we start getting the emulators and then finding Radical Dreamers even, you know, existed. Yeah. I mean, it, from what I was reading, it turned out that this game was kind of like the beginning of what becomes Cross, essentially. Like, this this was just something random that they did, and they went, okay, we'll use these ideas to make, you know, to put in Cross. Well, they used yeah. uh, almost, like, a ton of them in, in Cross, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like this is like the the test run, and I know uh, the writer Masato Kato was not exactly fond of this for a while afterward either, and he considered Cross to be the perfected version. Which which makes sense. I mean, this is just it means it's a text adventure, but it's still very interesting. It has a lot of different images of like you'll just see doors or, or enemies or hallways, like or beautiful sceneries when you go inside a room. And there's there's actually a lot to this little game, more than I expected. And I'm just seeing like the like the interesting ways like this is like a prototype in a way like Surge looks entirely different. Yeah. <laughs> or like seeing like Lady Riddell and he this version versus Chrono Cross. It's I don't know. I, I really dig having like this weird, you know, test run version, the short story of what became a novel. That's a good way to put it. I mean, it's just it's just it's very interesting to very like I mean, like Surge, look, like you said, nothing like Surge. He's a bard. Kid looks mostly like Kid because it's a girl with a ponytail. I mean, it's all you really see. And you have yeah. this random character, Mago, that looks really familiar. <laughs> Someone else. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still hate the fact that he's not in Chrono Cross, that he was changed, but I get it. it uh, yeah, that's the one thing that does suck. I wish they kept that. But the thing about Chrono Cross is uh, they, they talk about they, they talk about it philosophically a little bit of like, you know, the radical dreamers could happen. This could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah, because as I didn't know at the time, this is an alternate universe where this happened. In one of the many universes, this is just something that happened. Yeah. Where, and Megal is Megas, obviously, and that was what he was, this is someone he did in this world. And like, because the world that you play in Chrono Cross is a different dimension. And also, I think there's some, if you go to uh, Chronopolis, is that what it's called in Chrono Cross? Yeah, Chronopolis. There's a there's a monitor or something you can read that has actually text from this game and kid. If you have kid and Guile with you, they'll make a, they'll make a comment. I think. Yes. And I think that. I mean, so that's cool. And I'm I'm okay now that I'm older. I'm I'm completely okay with that idea, and I'm glad this exists, and I'm glad this is there. And I do. I mean, especially if you're fucking around with time, there's going to be multiple dimensions anyway, because that's what happens when you fuck with time, supposedly. So you're going to make other. You know, you're going to make time. You're going to make branching paths. Yes. So red, what system did you play this game on? Okay, I, I thought you would. I thought you were going to say Switch. No, I, I ended up getting on Steam. Same. <laughs> I did Switch. I do everything on Steam at this point because I love my laptop. 
did it on Switch. I was transfixed, completed the first ending, you know, died a couple times, all within one sitting. I I did I don't wanna say I I did die too. Because you can die easily. With you have a bunch of random battles in this that will happen, but I think they're cool how they happen. As you're progressing through this game, you have little moments where an enemy will show up and the music will start playing and you have different options like, oh, should I go for, you know, should I dodge his attack or go for him? And sometimes I choose the wrong option and you just, you just hear like, and he's like, "Ah." your responses are timed also. Oh, they are? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Is there is, um, I know there's at least one response to a story thing later that I just completely did not choose anything. And they're like, yeah, your silence means this. (laughs) That's cool. Okay. I mean, there's a few different, like, events that happen. There's, like, a weird... There's one room that ends up being, like, a trap where you go in and the ceiling tries to kill you. Yeah. I, I think I almost died there, because at first I tried to go forward, and they're like, no, you can't go forward. I'm like, okay, I'll go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I died in that room for sure. I, I liked it, and then when I got to... There's a room with a piranha, and I remembered this room when we were kids, when me and Red had played this. And you get into a room with a fountain with a gar- ugly ass gargoyle fountain, and then you start talking about how the water's bubbling and piranhas are in it. And I'm like, I'm gonna keep going through, keep going through. And the game's like, we can't do that, we can't do that. And finally, I'm like, okay, I turned around because <laughs> I'm like, I know what's coming if I continue this route. Yeah, death. But it, it's still very like it was. It was kind of intense in this little way. I'm just making. Like, I think decision. the storytelling is really cool, like intense and cool and dark and realistic in a way that I would not expect. Especially from this era of video games. Yeah, like I, because you find an old lady at one point that can heal you and has some, but also is involved in the ending, which I didn't even realize she showed up in the ending. I don't think I was paying enough attention when I was reading. Right. <laughs> so. There's also, like, I, I, I'm really struck by the, the sequence in the dungeon. I think that's a really great example of, like, exploring something that's way darker than you'd ever expect, like the old man. Yeah, the Keisha Dragoons. Yeah, and who's clearly supposed to be Radius from Chrono Cross, but I was oh. just gonna bring it up. He he resembles him a lot, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I don't yeah. remember Cross very well. But that like that is essentially a storyline, but you know what happens to him is a lot different here. Red, have and you played Cross kind of... more recently than me? I did play it on PSP, I wanna say three, four years ago. Okay, that's more recently than me. I've tried to pick it up like I, I bought it on PS three. I started it up at one point, like seven, eight years ago, and I didn't even get through the initial, like, dream sequence and just turned the game off. You gotta give it a full shot, man. You missed out on so much. Oh, I mean, I don't have a choice. It's episode 200 of the show, so... (laughs) That's why it's on the show. It was a... Yeah, it was just... I wasn't in the mood for an RPG. I'm like, I'm not ready for this, and I just turned it off, and I'm I'm 100% going... Well, that's why it's on the show, because I don't have a choice. I'll make myself do it. Yes. If the show has proven, I should make myself do almost anything, so... (laughs) This show... (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, I will be playing through it, but I'm I'm excited. And replaying this got me more excited to play Cross. Like seeing the the dragoon in this little thing, we have to go do this event where you have to go get the sword and you go get the Moss Immune and the Inhander. I'm like, ah, I remember the Inhander is in Chrono Cross, and the Moss Immune is what that evil Dario guy I think has. Yes, that, that right. is that is the plot line in Chrono Cross, but here pretty much, yeah, in a simplified I, way. And Riddle doesn't look like Riddle does in Chrono Cross, but she kind of looks like that. Girl, there's a girl with a pink dress in Chrono Cross. But I don't remember her name. Oh yes, yeah, I, you can't remember her name right now. But she's like one of the the dragoons, and that's what she. That's what Riddell looks like in this game. Look, yes. reminds me a lot of that. That's what they were going for. And and I know we were first playing this because you you're going here to go kill Link. Link took over the mansion, and and he talks about Riddle's daughter. Then you find out that Riddle's not actually his daughter. He just adopted her essentially when he took over the place and killed everybody. Just like, is a strong word. Just like Shao Kahn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not like, he's like, you're my daughter now. But yes. I killed your parents, so <laughs> you're mine. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's a weird, like, but I mean, it has, it has some creepy moments. Like you go into a room with a mirror that looks at you that you have, that you almost get trapped in the mirror, I guess, but then it saves you. Like, gee, there's some really dark and like very interesting moments in this little text adventure that kind of make you, yes. that make you feel. Like the interesting, weird relationship between Surge and that statue. You talking about the the one that oh the statue in the mirror? Yeah. Yes. Like he's into that statue for like no reason, but the game somehow makes it really work. <laughs> Not wrong. This was a lot of stuff like that. I mean, there's just so many. Like, there's a there's something that I, I remembered, but I couldn't remember what it was. Like, what you're supposed to do? You find a statue, you have to put stuff inside its mouth to make it open. And I did not know what to do, so I went through the whole list of items: the fake centipede, the the string, everything, until finally 
I had to walk away, and it was later on I found some item I was supposed to put inside there. But I thought that was cool, too. Like, little things that just made this game interesting. Yes. is For a game that apparently took three months to make, it is incredible for how much there is to do. Oh, did you guys run into the Griffin? I'm assuming? They did. The random yes. Fights? That's what that actually me. helped me out, because it gave you the sequence for that one circle later on. Oh, yeah. I used the guide. But, yeah, you're right. I I played this game legit at first, and I said, fuck it, just use the guide to get through it. The only thing I used from online was, like, a map of the manor. That and helps that a it. lot. I don't know. I guess I just have good spatial awareness in fictional places. I get confused because, like, go up the stairs. Go. D- I mean, after a while, it was kind of get it, it made more. It made sense. Like, it, it isn't that complicated, but I. Yeah, like, they do tell you about, like, where things are. Kind of like where, where you like, at least in this translation, it's like. Go up the stairs back to blank. Yeah, you can figure out what's what's led to what and where things are. I just I'm me, so I cheat. Well, they they do a decent <laughs> job of reminding you that you've been there before too. Yeah, because I'll make yes. don't, I'll make comments at you. <laughs> it's just interesting. There's a lot, there's a lot of little stuff that happens in here where you that you go to you go to Link's room, have to you get a you have to go to a library to find a book. You fight a bunch of goblins at one point, which is kind of amusing because you also get to see. Magus be Magus essentially, where he casts spells the, and kills people in the treasure room, and then you can also run into goblins for random battles too. I never did that. I I ran into the Griffin. I think I ran into a ghost once, which wasn't where Magus pushed me into the ghost and then killed the ghost. Yes, that was cool. <laughs> I, I ran into a few random ghosts. There was one ghost in the I don't know that one uh, room with the gears. That was the first one I ran into, and then then the hallways I ran into like two more. Yeah, I ran into a good handful of ghosts, a good handful of griffins and skeletons. Did any tell you there was no escape, nowhere to run, nowhere to go? I never tried to escape. Okay. The skeletons are really easy. Yeah, the, I, don't, I didn't find any skeletons, I don't think. Oh, they're fun because they ban- mm-hmm. they they essentially start like dancing suggestively and it's transfixing Magus. <laughs> I thought and then you just kind of like... A what, Red? I thought there was a mandatory like skeleton fight near the alternate radius in the huh. dungeon. Maybe there was, and I just don't remember it. Maybe I, I played multiple games since I played this. So. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing is that like the the writing is good enough that it makes the, each fight feel almost like it's meant to be there. It was very amusing. I mean, it was very cool. Like it, you're, and you're right. It does. It, it it makes sense. It doesn't feel out of touch. It doesn't feel like. We just threw this here to pad. It, it feels like, okay, this is we're in we're in a place and we're fighting things that make sense. Yeah. And the griffin thing that you were talking about is there's a mouth later on that turns into a griffin in the kitchen, and that's who gives yeah. you the advice of how to if you free him. Just like in Chrono Trigger, how there's a little creature you can free that will help you in this in that version at least. Or Chrono you know, when you gotta any. grab grab his tail, that rat. Squeak! I'll tell you the code. Hold down L and R and press X or whatever it is. Yeah, there's that one, and then there's also a creature that you that you free. I think essentially that you can recruit later. Brain not working. I think what it was you... Fritz that you release in the in the tower, in the dungeon, and he'll give you free potions. But don't tell my dad. <laughs> I think it's awesome. worth mentioning the lineage of this game as well, real quick. Sure. And that like this follows Corona Trigger, obviously, but. Then you have a number of people like Masato Kato and Yasunori Matsuda that, and people like that that would go on to work on Xenogears and then obviously Chrono Cross. And then it's just interesting that there's this really interesting, tight line of games from Chrono Trigger onward that are just kind of touched by some of the same people that are all really interesting, generally well-regarded, dark um, RPGs that Square doesn't really make anymore. Yeah. I mean, like, with Xenogears, for example, like, Xenogears is supposed to be Final Fantasy VII, but they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. We're not putting this as our flagship. Yeah, Xenogears uh, is Final Fantasy VII, and then it was going to be Chrono Cross, or Chrono Trigger sequel. Yeah, that didn't happen either. <laughs> but they're like, hey, we like this enough, make it your own thing. Cool. Got that. I do love that game. And then there's a, there's also a, a, a humorous part in here where you run into a goblin sitting down that has the key that you need, and you have a whole conversation where he's drinking tea and you talk to him, and I really thought he was going to try to poison you, so I didn't drink, the, I, if I wasn't going to drink the tea if I had an option to, but then you just end up telling him a story, yeah. and that's how you get the key. <laughs> you don't even fight him, which I thought was cool, like, just to, you know, change perspective what you're what you're expecting. Like, sometimes, like, the story might not even be that good, but he'll be happy enough. It's just how lonely the guy is. <laughs> he's like, strangers who broke into my building where I live, please tell me. 
Well, it just Jordan. goes to show that anybody with an, any type of intelligence, like him and Riddell, anybody with intelligence hates Lynx. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean, Lynx was an oppressor who just came to this place, took over, killed the previous owners, enslaved people, and said, hey, I'm, I'm your boss now. Yep. It's almost like a narcissist boss don't work in real life or in video games. Huh? But that's a really interesting perspective that is not really explored in video games that much. Or if it is, it's like a one-off little joke of like the guard who doesn't really care about what you're doing. Yeah. But there's like a whole philosophy to this that I think is really cool of like... There, there's like definite people who have opinions about things that are happening in the game that you're in. That's a good way to put it. It's like, it, I mean, and I, I, this game is a little bit of backtracking too, where you have to go back and forth to get items, like talk to Riddle after you talk to the dragoon to get her rings, and then he gives you information about a sword or something, or you get the sword, bring him the sword, and he tells. I can't remember what you're supposed. I just know I got the swords, and at some point I put the sword in the in the right thing and stop the trap and continued on. I remember that. But I don't remember what it did. Uh, it just like sent a shockwave through the room and it just deactivated the trap. Okay, did it lead to something that you needed or? Yeah, you had to get the um, Acacia. Oh, like the seal or something? Thing. Yeah. To get him to get out of his trance? Yeah. Okay. And the whole story of this is that you're sneaking in to get the frozen flame, which if you didn't play cross doesn't mean anything. But from what I remember, the frozen flame is actually part of Lavo's correct, Red? Yeah, so I guess as he was falling to Earth in, what, 65 million B.C., that's when a piece of it fell off of him. And I think Zeal was the first uh, civilization to really you try to utilize it and do something with it. Okay. Yeah, the way that this all ties together back to Chrono Trigger is super interesting and, like, a little obscure, which I really like. Like, how all this really depends upon the fact that Shala was, like, kind of vanished or vanquished along with Lavos into that uh, zeal time. And like, it's kind of just like what happened to her and how she kind of merged with Lavos and everything. And, you know, we Chrono still- Cross is about that. This is a little bit about that. Not Are really we still but- waiting for that answer. What happens, Kala? Yes. And no, I know we get something in, in cross. I haven't, and there's a little bit in trigger with a dream devourer, with the added, the devourer, scene. Yeah. but I still like, man, we, I know they're never going to finish that series, but still, I wish they would. <laughs> well, it's 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 interesting because the the team that worked on Cross, like you know, a lot of them broke off and wanted to make Model with Soft, you know, the home of Xeno Saga and Bait and Kaitos, and the other half that stayed at Square went to work on Final Fantasy XI. Uh, that game <laughs> that was a great game. It was. Yeah, let's, but let's let's put this great RPG team on this MMO that's still going. I have I have thoughts about eleven, but that's another episode. Uh, that's a three hour episode of just reminiscing about a game that took too much of my life away. <laughs> but <laughs> with Radical Dreamers, like you, you eventually get to the ballroom, I think is where it is, where you get to a you finally get to a point that leads to the actual because you find a fake frozen flame at one point, then you finally end up getting towards the the final part of this little game and you find you get into a trap. And like we had mentioned earlier where a griffin tells you to go left, right, or he gives you the he gives you the the escape to get out of this trap so you don't die. Right. And then this is where you're finally confronted by Lynx and you find the real frozen flame. And, and this is where the, the game griffin gets... is the griffin is very like vague about it too. He doesn't tell you what's coming or when you're supposed to utilize his hint. But you gotta put the pieces together. Yeah. Game makes you think, unfortunately. <laughs> I apparently didn't like very because I didn't do that, which does surprise no one. But <laughs> I just, but it was cool. I mean, it's cool seeing Lynx, and Lynx does kind of look like what he does, look, what he will look like in Cross. That he's human this time. Yeah, but he still has like the face of a of a cat kind of. He has whiskers and stuff. He's like an evil Italian man. Oh, <laughs> okay. He's like the Chrono version of Jafar from. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> he does kind of look like Jafar. Now that you mention it, and I'm looking at him. I'm I'm never not going to see that, though. <laughs> I'll always see that face. That's funny. I never even thought about Just, that. So it's a weird... The, the Cobra staff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird little scene. Like, the whole idea is that Kid has something that he wants. She has the Chrono Trigger. Which, is that supposed to be the egg that... The time egg. Chrono... Hmm? The time egg, yeah. Okay. That's, That's what that... Luca gave her, yeah. Lucas shouldn't have that because that was used to resurrect Chrono. Unless you didn't do that. <laughs> I, I do like the idea that it that it connects with with Chrono Trigger in that way. I mean, I would rather have him say Time Egg and not the Chrono Trigger because I'm like, well, that's a bit on the head, but I get it. 
Ross talks more about the Chrono Trigger. <laughs> okay, I don't remember. Yeah, because I haven't played Cross so long, I don't remember anything about Cross. Like to me, this is all like I don't remember being called a Chrono Trigger and Trigger. Oh, you do get a Chrono Trigger and Trigger though. I have no recollection of this. <laughs> Yeah, the, the cool thing is that the Chrono Cross will answer a lot of this and like go more in depth on every plot point pretty much here. I'm excited for that. Because like there's so much this game just kind of throws at you that's just kind of like, you know, oh yeah, Luca is just dead. Like straight up. And I think it's during this ending, depending on what you did, like for me, she broke the Chrono Trigger, I think, and then Link's ran. I think the old lady shows up, which is which I it's from Pore, I think is what they were saying. Yeah. I believe in mine that the old lady just stole the the egg. Okay, I think in mine it got broke. Yeah, mine it, yeah, it did not get broken in mine. It just got stolen away from Link's and Kid. Okay, and, and mine Kid died, and then they just like kind of left the manor, and that was that. <laughs> oh damn! As as yeah, in in mine they left the manor. Magus took Kid with with him, and Surge just ran away. Oh, okay. In mine, so like. Yeah, the, the little lady steals the time egg and then McGill and Kid come out to the forest with you and they basically have this really tearful goodbye moment where they leave Surge behind and go on their own. It was kind of like that because they were being hunted but the guards were looking for them. I'm like, Link's guards? I didn't, I don't, it didn't occur to me that it was poor A soldiers unless I didn't get the old woman and I don't remember correctly. <laughs> that was a few weeks ago, but... It was just kind of like, it's still interesting. And just the fact that knowing that it's Pore, and then they do make a comment how the frozen flame was brought from a kingdom to the north of where you're at, and then it was taken away, which I'm assuming they're talking about Guardia, because Guardia falls in the end of Chrono Trigger, you find they, out. Were they talking about that, or were they talking about Fort Draconica? It's Fort Draconica. Cross, I, I think that's where they got the frozen flame and cross, is Fort Draconica, which I think was north. Oh, no, you're right. Okay, that makes more sense. Guardia probably didn't have the Frozen Flame. Guardia would have had the Mazamune, though. Yeah. Because the Mazamune was the sword that was transferred down from hero to hero. Okay, that makes more sense. I just keep thinking because, you know, we know we have the fall of Guardia and everything happened. And Guardia is north of the El Nido Archipelago, so... I still I still wish you could have went there and crossed. Just talking about this makes me want to play this game and Chrono Cross again. <laughs> well, this game won't take you long to play. Chrono Cross might take you a little longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I already played it once for 50 hours, but I'll play it again. I mean, aren't there things to make it faster, though, in, in the current version? There are. Okay. Which I'm excited to try out. Which I will be, I'm sure, using, because I'm going to have to. Because beating a 35-hour game in a week ain't going to happen. <laughs> Not anymore. Oh. I'll, be, I'll be playing over multiple weeks. But any... Oh, and the way that the ending... You do get... You can get... As you had heard just from us talking, you do get different endings depending on how things happen in the game. Depending on there's like a love meter between you and you and kids somehow that goes up and down depending on your reaction to certain events. That's why mine died, because I like any chance I got to insult her, I did it. And I didn't know she would just die. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. I want I do want to know how old Serge is in this game. Like he's vaguely young adult, but they talk about how kid is like 16, nearly 17. Well, considering this is Japan and this is the 1990s, eh, less of an issue, I think, to them. <laughs> He's just super into her. That's all I'll say. Yeah, that, that's how I took it. It's just like, mm, okay. But yeah, there. I just know there's different things that affect like the way that... And then there's like something about you can fall asleep, apparently, in this, too, which I never did. Yeah, that that I want to look more into, because I only did the one ending. Because like, you, you basically beat the game once and get kind of ver- different versions of that ending, and then there are six more after that. That's cool, though. And like, but like they run the gamut of like, like there's a list here I'm looking at of like, oh, there's one which McGill is actually, you know, friends with Riddell. And then he just like wants to court her and basically kidnaps her. And like they just ran off into the into the sun. And there's kid and a sunflower ending. So that relationship deal with like if Majel or Magil is supposed to be Magus. Yes. Right. And then kid is like a reincarnation in a sense of. Follow. Yes. Follow. Like that gets a little like Star Wars weird there. But that, I mean, that's the big Chrono Cross reveal in the end of the game. <laughs> oh, no, that? you spoiled the game for 2022. No, I mean, I'm just like that. Yeah, that's the thing okay. is that like, yeah, kid is Shala and that, you know, it's a it's a clone of her sent to like, you know, King came out in things out. not spoiling anything, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but just, it's cool. Endings? that all these endings exist. Like there's just a bunch of random shit you can get. And like, 
McGill is a space cop. <laughs> he uses the power of rock to force links out of hiding. It's just odd. Like, I won't play this game again to try any other stuff because I just don't care enough, but I'm glad it exists. I think I, I have this weird I, stuff. There's a there's a version where there's like there's some mechas going on. There's a mecha links. <laughs> that is kind of impre- like you said. This is impressive for some a game that was made in three months. They just threw all the shit together. I mean, it is still impressive. I mean, yes, it's a text adventure, but someone still had to draw this. Someone still had to code yes. it all. Someone still had to write it all. I do love seeing the little Super Nintendo as or Super Famicom like character models and stuff, and they look pretty good for what they are. Like I really like the style the game goes for quite a bit. Same, the graphics still hold up, I think, decently enough. Yeah, like it looks a little weird seeing like Riddell the way she looks, but other than that, it's yeah, it's pretty I mean, timeless. Think about what you're actually playing. You're playing like choose your own adventure audio visual visual audio book. Like pretty much what you're playing the whole time. That yeah. was beamed to you via satellite. Yeah. Too bad we didn't get the cell of you. I just wish, you know, I, mean, I wish, to, and I know this is never going to happen. I wish they would take all the cell of you games, just pack it together and just sell it. But they'll never yes. will. So I know that. So that would be That's cool. what I wanted them to do with the virtual board games on 3DS. They really should. They won't, but they really should. I'm just glad that. There are some go good games on there, I think. Yeah. That are now lost to time. Well, emulation, but other, other than that, lost to time. Yeah. I'm just glad Masato Kato finally let them like put this game somewhere because I think he was one of the people that would, did not want this to come back out because they wanted to do it. Uh, when the Chrono Trigger came to DS and things like that, that they wanted to put this on there, but he stopped him. Well, I'm, I'm thankful that this finally exists. It, it's great to see games that never, you know, left that never came out of Japan to finally get re-released here. And something like yes. this, I feel like they did it the right way. I mean, I guess part of it was, like you said, make Chrono Cross more attractive since you're buying a game from 2000. So, <laughs> you know, there's I mean, something on there that yeah. no one's ever played before to convince them to buy it. And, you know, that's me spending 20 bucks basically to get Radical Dreamers because I already have a copy of Chrono Cross on my PlayStation. That is totally fair. I will pay 20 bucks for that for that localization because I think it's worth it. But now you have a remastered version of Cross on your on your system. Sure. That's cool, too. I, I really like both games. I think both games are incredible, to be honest. Like, Chrono Trigger is cool. I do like that game, but I think these two games kind of just make that game so much better because they are so dark and different. I am really looking forward to replaying Cross because I have, like, no memory of it. So it can be very interesting going back to that game <laughs> to see like, yeah. if my opinion changes. <laughs> like, again, like I think Chrono Trigger is incredibly solid. It's a cool game. I like it. This and Cross, I think, are the pinnacle of what writing in a video game was in that era. Any last things you guys want to say about Radical Dream before we go on to Shelf Stacker Box? Maybe the fact that it, like, one thing I, I do enjoy about it is that, and, and why it might resonate with some of us more so than we would have thought, is that the way they pulled this game off when it comes to describing the emotions of the the characters, I think at that time and even a little beyond that, we missed that because graphically, like on, in the PlayStation era or, or even Super Nintendo era, you couldn't really show or um, like convey that amount of emotion of emotion graphically. So yeah. here you actually get to read it and feel the characters and feel a little bit more. So that's that's what worked for me playing this game. Yeah, that makes sense completely. I think there's just a really writerly quality to it that makes me upset that we were not deemed worthy enough to basically get this game when it came out. Like. I just feel like if they had marketed it the right way, there could have been a market for like, you know, these audio visual novels that are a bit more than a book, but are video game esque, but are a little bit different. Like you sell it for like 20 bucks, you know, I mean, we weren't even deemed enough to get freaking Final Fantasy five when it first came out. So like that's true, too. And that's a that's a very good game. It's just Americans are dumb. They're not going to want this. Let's get like, the quest. Which like, I, like. I like the weird <laughs> the adventure games and like edutainment games on PC that kind of happened around this time as well. You know, I grew up on those as a kid and this isn't this isn't that necessarily. But I think this is a little bit related to that kind of stuff where it's just like, you know, simpler and just more text based and just it has a yeah. whole feeling and whole magic to itself. Mm, How did you like great. Mario's time machine? Then, I yeah. like Mario's time machine. <laughs> Stop. No, I'm not kidding. I played it actually 
on my phone a few years before before the podcast, and I'm like, this isn't too bad, Ashley. This is all right. <laughs> it, it, it's stupid, but if you play it on a phone when you're just sitting around and have time to kill, it's not bad. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say you take the game and take it out to an alley and throw it against the ground just because you couldn't sell it to GameStop. But I mean, it's worth ha- you know, it's worth playing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that either. No, oh, never. Huh? That wasn't a memory <laughs> from our past. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alternate dimension, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> where Red got upset that they couldn't sell his Mario's time machine. <laughs> no, I, I I played Mario's time machine and I played Mario's missing. They're both okay for what they are. I don't. They're fine. They exist and they're they're cool. I think. Yeah. All right. We should go on a shelf stacker box and I'll go first. I'm going to put this in the stack. I enjoyed it. I'm glad it exists. I don't plan to revisit it ever probably <laughs> again, but I'm so glad that it finally did become stateside. And I will be telling people, of course, to buy the Radical Dreamers collection or Chrono Cross. But I just, yeah, this is one of those games I won't put in the stack. Now, what about you, Dominic? Oh, on the shelf. Absolutely. I love this. This and Chrono Cross are incredible. Okay. So having both together is great, and I just love <laughs> the dark direction and just like what these games became. And I wish there was more of them. I do too. Actually, I would like to see more. And I think if I would have played Cross more recently and had a better, this game would have resonated more with me. But I don't really remember Cross much, and so I, I don't remember Cross at all to be honest. So like, I think that plays a part in it too. Why it doesn't? It didn't resonate with me the same way as like you just played Cross recently. So it, I think yes, it it, it hit more. Yes. And what about you? <laughs> you read? I'd say I'd have to probably stack it. Good game. Definitely enjoyed it. Even probably more so now that I'm older. I can't really see myself revisiting it enough. I think that's one of those games to where, all right, let's let's let five, six years go by. Let's see like if I want to feel like getting a different ending or something like that. But to me, the, the biggest takeaway from it like I spoke about earlier, is just how that game conveyed emotion in an RPG. And I, I, it's not going to happen, but, you know, modern, even uh, modern RPGs sometimes miss out, miss that mark. And, and hopefully one day they can take something like this, learn from it, and, and get that emotion that this game can bring. Okay. That would be, yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. All right. Well, I'm glad that we all, I'm glad we, I'm glad that we were able to finally do this for the show. Yes, we had talked uh, about doing this a while ago, and then we found out they were re-releasing it. So we just we we wanted to wait until it actually officially came here because like we can play that version instead of playing the translated version. Yes. So yeah, and if you want to hear about Chrono Trigger, episode one hundred is all about Chrono Trigger for like I think almost three hours. So go check that out (laughs) if you want to hear that. And then Chrono Cross will be out months later for episode two hundred, which will be a few months after this when you hear this. But it's coming. And if, you, and if you want to know where things ended up with RPGs and this lineage of games, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have never touched that series yet. And I think that's a, a weird thing to a guy who loves Xenogears a lot. I have never touched Xenosaga. I mean, I know Xenosaga, I, Xenosaga played episode one, didn't like it, and I have not touched Xenoblade Chronicles at all yet. Oh, episode one's fantastic. But anyway. I wasn't in the mood for it when it first came out. And I, it didn't do it for me. And I unfortunately dropped off it and have never went back yet. There's not a lot it has in common with Xenogears, but it's definitely a game worth playing for sure. I want to. I was just not the right. I was young. I was in high school. I think it was freshman year it came out for me. And I just one day, one day I'm going to go back to it and I'm going to I'm going to play it. But I don't know why. <laughs> That's kind of the issue there. All right. So if you enjoy. Oh, and Dominic, where can people find you at? Well, you can find me on Descendant Waves on YouTube. It's my music podcast. Uh, we look at different albums every week and compare and discuss them. I'm on the Overblood Facebook group, and you can also find me on Twitter at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I. All right, and if you enjoyed this episode, there's over 350 other episodes you listen to of Games My Mom Found. So definitely go check them out. And also, please follow us on Patreon. We have a Patreon. For a little dollar, you can vote in the Patreon and help each, each there's a poll each month to help out the show. And please follow us. I think it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And when you're shout out to my awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Helena at Hell Has Three. You can follow her on TikTok. And also want to give a shout out to my buddy Bill Tucker, who did the MCU movies with me, and we reviewed all those. He started his own podcast, Gamer Looks at Forty. Definitely go check him out. Also, he interviews people about how video games have affected their life. Very good show. So, I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.